Hello everyone, thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel once again. In this clip, I want to talk to you about those moments in life that are very intense, emotionally speaking, and which appear to be the result of what someone or something is doing to us from the outside. Those, those moments in which we are suffering, and it appears that if someone else changed their behavior or something on the outside would change, then our suffering would end. In his lecture, All That We Behold, Neville Goddard says that although things appear to be existing outside of us, they actually exist within. And he's referring to our experience of life. So all that you behold, although it appears without, it is within. That this vast world, this vast outer world, is a shadow, a reflection of our inner imaginal activity. Neville says in that lecture that if we, using our imagination, are able to enter into a state and assume the truth of that state, the outer world will respond to that assumption. What this means then is that we are able to end our suffering and that if we are resistant to that, our suffering will continue. So if we stay where we are, stay in the condition that we're in and try to make other people change their behavior, we're actually prolonging our suffering. Now, there are many people who will be unable, that you will know, who will be unable to accept that. So this video serves a dual purpose of reminding you of these facts and helping you to minister to the needs of other people who may find this sort of thing too difficult to understand or maybe they're too hurt or too wounded to attend to this kind of thinking in this moment, okay? So without referring to specific events that are going on, so that the reason I'm doing that is that you can apply this to any, any situation at any time, we're going to look at this concept of all that you behold, though it appears without, it is within. My experience of life is based upon my feeling. What I feel is what is impressed upon consciousness. And those feelings are presented to me are evidenced by the physical conditions and circumstances of, of my life. That's why in this world, a world that's full of, of danger, there are some people whose lives are always safe. We call those people privileged people. And I'm not speaking about any specific ethnicity, race, nation. People who are safe in the midst of danger <clears throat> are doing something differently to people who experience danger. The people who are safe feel safe. The people who are harmed feel that they are at risk of harm, feel that they are being harmed. And so to be safe in the midst of danger, one has to feel safe. How do you do that? In your imagination, you need to contact the feeling of safety. You need to think about what makes you feel safe and allow your attention to rest on that feeling. It is very, very difficult to do when you're surrounded by things that appear to be dangerous. I, I know that firsthand, but it is absolutely achievable. You can, if necessary, go back to a moment in your life when you felt safe. This could be something in your childhood. It could be when you were curled up in bed. It could be a br the briefest of moments, but remember that the emotional, language for safety doesn't change even though the outward circumstances surrounding that safety changes okay so we're not going to ask other people to keep us safe we're not going to ask people who do harmful things to stop doing those harmful things we are going to use our imagination to evoke the feeling of safety and allow our attention to rest on it at sufficient intensity for a sufficient amount of time so that consciousness can reflect that safety back to us. The circumstances around us will shift. It will take on the shape that's necessary to reflect the safety to you that's proportionate to what's going on around you. But that's what's going to happen. If you want to feel valued, you have to contact the feeling of being valued. If you want to be loved, if you want to be appreciated, if you want to be respected, if you want to be honored, whatever it might be, if you just want to um, feel that there's a sense of equality or parity, you need to contact those feelings. 
It might not be something that you can refer to in your immediate present. It might not be something that you can refer to from five years ago, but there will be something in your timeline that corresponds to those feelings, to those emotions. Those emotions exist within you because all emotions exist within your body of consciousness. If you cannot remember a time that you felt safe or valued or honored or any of those things, look at someone else who expresses those things to you and imagine what they feel like. Feel after those specific emotions and allow your attention to rest on those emotions and, to, and sustain that, excuse me, for the requisite amount of time. By resting your uh, attention on it, the intensity builds and allow an impression to be made on consciousness so that you get the evidence back. People's behavior towards you will change automatically. Now this has nothing to do with absolving anyone of responsibility. Every person, every individual member of the global community has a different role to play. Some people are, have been cast into terrible roles in this dispensation. They are suffering greatly under the weight of their hatred. Believe me, it is a painful thing to be a hateful person. It is a painful thing to be a cruel person because what you give to someone is only a part of what you are experiencing. So we're not gonna concern ourselves with what other people are doing. All of these things exist to reflect, for us to reflect to each other what we are conscious of being. Neville Goddard says that when you accept this to be true, you will be able to forgive anybody for anything they have ever done to offend you. You will know that they are suffering in order to enable you to make this discovery, to learn how to activate your own power, to exercise your own power, to flex your consciousness muscles and to show how tremendous you truly are through your recovery, through your learning, through your healing. But all of this must be done imaginally. All of this must be done in imagination. All of this must be done using the body of consciousness. Now, you may be surrounded by people who are feeling very, very angry or hurt or betrayed or frustrated or confused or guilty. It doesn't matter what anyone is going through. You will know how to speak to that person to encourage them to do what you do. And if you cannot get through to them with your words, get through to them by being the demonstration of what you're trying to explain. Okay, so in a moment of chaos, if you are able to contact a feeling of safety or at peace or equilibrium of whatever it might be, you will inspire them to inquire of you what your secret is and that will be an entry point for you to share with them what you know. So remember, I, can, I will put the link to the, the lecture, All That You Behold, underneath. What we are looking for from other people exists in us. On this occasion, I cannot countenance any alternative theory or any alternative fact. There is only one truth concerning this issue. All that we behold, although it appears without, it is within. What you are looking for is within you. I'm speaking to people who are able to understand what I'm saying, to accept what I'm saying, and to put it into practice. Okay, We're not going to be able to stop someone else doing what they're doing because they have been cast into that role. And they have to play that part this time. So don't worry about it. It's not your job to interfere with what anyone else is doing. It is our job as indivi individuals to be concerned with what we are doing, what we are contributing. If somebody is accusing you of something or saying that your feeling of empathy is illegitimate because of who you are, become deaf to that. Just look at what you are feeling the issue is and feel after the solution. That's all you need to do. If somebody is telling you, saying horrible things to you in this moment that you can't tolerate, become deaf, deaf to what they're saying. Just focus on your feelings in this moment. Anything that appears to be on the outside of you is on the inside. And what that means is that your outward situation can change. Not 
only that, but when we assume a state different to the state we're presently in, all of the effects of the present state disappear. That's the thing I think that's the most rewarding about putting the effort in to this kind of activity. All of the suffering of the present state ceases when you assume the reality, the truth of another state. Have fun with this today. Yes, have fun, have a good time, make yourself feel good. Explore the world, the realm of consciousness. Feel after whatever it is that you want to experience. Feel after its emotional correlate. Sustain the emotion for the required amount of time at the required length of intensity until an impression is made and allow the evidence to show up for you. You will, be a you will be a witness for other people. You will be an example to other people. You will inspire other people as you do this. I wish you all love, joy, peace, and happiness. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next upload.